Oh, many things. Oh, yes, it mm. has. Among them, corrupting the nation's youth, turning them onto drugs, the practice of premarital sex. Well, in the third part of our series on X-rated rock, we examine the most serious charge yet leveled against any form of modern self-expression. Here's Frank Mann. The young man had tied a rope around this brace and wrapped it around the board, had hung himself and had his jam box laying next to him on the ground. What was playing? Uh, Highway to Hell, ACDC. It is a charge too serious to ignore, this alleged connection between rock music and suicide. ACDC is a group very popular among teenagers. Dennis Bartz liked the band so much, he played their music as he took his own life. And Steve Boucher, who suddenly shot himself to death one night, repeatedly listened to their song, Shoot to Thrill. It talks about putting a gun to your head and pulling the trigger. What a thrill, you know, super thrill. Really do it, really do it, you know, pull the trigger. I felt as if that they had murdered my son. Dan Peters, an anti-rock crusader, agrees. You are accusing these groups of being responsible for suicides? We're re holding them responsible for encouraging kids to do violent acts against themselves. In front of his followers, Peters introduces a man named John Tanner, who in 1975 attempted suicide by shooting himself in the face. Blame Disfigured for life, boy. Tanner now says rock music made him pull the trigger. Did you make your decision because of the music you were listening to? Yeah, I, I think that that was an easy 80, 90 percent of the reason. And then, uh, you know, like I'd only started listening to rock about a year and a half before that, and, and until then I'd never, ever considered suicide. But should the music or the video assume responsibility for a child taking his or her own life? I think if it were to have any impact, it would be on somebody who was already unbalanced. I'm not aware that a lot of those lyrics give permission for it to happen as much as they simply reflect an issue that is of concern in the society and something that does happen. And what happens in society, says Nikki Six of Motley Crue, is what his band sings about. There is no hidden message that would cause someone to want to die. Well, there was the story of the kid that hung himself when his mother said he had to cut his hair. And his, it was his 1966 or something, because he, he wanted to go to a Rolling Stones concert. Hung himself, and everyone blamed it on the Rolling Stones. Now, that's, like, ludicrous. Yeah. And that type of stuff we don't feel responsible for. We feel saddened by it, but not responsible. They don't show you the blood all over the room. They don't show you, you know, how someone has to find that body. They just say, hey, you know, this is the way out. There was not a drop of blood left in my son's body. It was all over the room. He literally blew out his brains. And they glorify this. And I think it's murder. Many parents feel that what's heard on the record is even more damaging when played live before thousands of screaming fans. Tomorrow, we'll show you a rock concert given by a band which many parents consider to be the most violent and pornographic musical act in the country. For the Eyewitness News Update, I'm Frank Mann. They have been both revered and reviled, accused of everything from fostering violence to lowering sex to its sleaziest level. With only three albums and a handful of singles, Motley Crue has the potential of attracting more young listeners than any other rock band in the world. It's just something I love. <laughs> Hard rock. But sex and violence? What's wrong with that? You're only a kid once. It takes you away, you know, if you're depressed or bored or something, you put on Motley Crue and you just, you, you're having fun again. They're great. I mean, people just get too deep into the, the thought of things and they don't like you listening, but it's cool, man. Their fans are as young as 11 years old. Some of them will do almost anything to meet the band. During a contest given by this radio station where a backstage pass was the grand prize, a 13-year-old girl wrote in and said, I'd do it with the crew till black and blue. A 17-year-old girl wrote, I'd give them every piece of action they wanted. And this from a 14-year-old boy, I'd give them my mother. The band members shrug it off, adding that they've even received explicit videotapes from some of their fans. To them, it's just a reaction to an illusion they say they create. I've seen them out there, and they're like, I mean, it's like Halloween for them or, or tonight or, or like whatever. I mean, they get to like get dressed up and go do something. This is a fantasy for them, in other words. It's like going to uh, 
you know, Pirates of the Caribbean or going to a, or a good house. horror show or something. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly, how is it being interpreted? Is this song, for example, simply about innocent sex, or is it about rape, or possibly even murder? Whatever it means, parents don't like the impact this music has on their kids, and some parents are fighting back. In St. Paul, this band was forced to leave the stage during a high school dance. An assistant principal objected to lyrics used by the singer, which suggested the act of incest between a mother and her son. The band has since filed suit against the school. I could have said, I killed my mama, and no one would have stopped the show, no one would have done anything. Now what's worse, a swear word or saying I killed? What, you know, where does the, where's the fine line on this? For as long as music has existed, people have been trying to draw that line. 25 years ago, we heard claims that rock was decadent. But what was outraged then is considered tame today. Rock hasn't changed its tune, only its messages. From sex to rape, from getting high to getting killed. One can only guess 